we really felt like um, Family Life had a good army. Uh, ground troops on the ground in uh, nearly a hundred uh, communities around the United States where we, we were holding our conferences and had uh, hundreds of small groups, thousands of small groups meeting uh, to study uh, what the scriptures had to say about marriage and family. But we really felt like we needed an Air Force. We needed something uh, from a mass media standpoint that would raise the awareness of what we were doing and proclaim Christ and the biblical blueprints for marriage and family so that more couples and more families could benefit and more legacies uh, could be left for future generations to take the gospel to, to their generation. And, and so we began to pray about the possibility of a radio program and uh, ask God to show us the way. Well, at about the same time, uh, a couple uh, flew into Little Rock to become donors to what Family Life was doing. And basically, it, it was prompted by uh, a wife. She found out about Family Life because she and her husband had been to the Weekend to Remember Marriage Conference. And this particular gentleman is, uh, at the time, was the owner of McCoy's Lumber Company, Mike McCoy. So Mike and Myra had flown in, and uh, they said, what do you have? We said, well, we want to start a parenting conference. Uh, uh, we said, that's about $225,000. And they said, well, what else do you have? What else are you going to do? I said, well, we want to start a radio show, we think. A lot of things got to fall in place. How much is that? Well, that's about $775,000. And um, they flew off and flew out. And uh, this is one of the great stories of the history of, of family life because uh, a couple days later, after they'd left, they called back and said, we'd like to do the parenting. We'd like to do the parenting conference and committed the money to do that, sizable uh, sum of money. And Mike said, the only thing I ask is that you, you, you keep it confidential. Well, I made a mistake, uh, not on purpose, but I accidentally slipped because our staff knew they had been in the office a week before and a week later I shared that the money had been given for our parenting conference. And of course, our staff put two and two together and so I had to call Mike and Myra and, and offer to send the money back. And I got Mike on the phone and, and said, uh, you asked that this be confidential. I didn't breach it on purpose. Our staff put two and two together, figured out you gave the money. Uh, if I need to send the money back, I will. And there was a pause for like, what seemed like a minute, only probably five seconds. And then Mike began to laugh. And he said, you know, it was probably unfair of me to give you a gift like that and then ask you to keep it a secret. He said, besides, uh, you can go do that radio show you want to go do too. And he committed uh, over $750,000 to that. Well, I began to weep. I wept. Because uh, as a friend of mine, uh, Joe Stowell, uh, former president of Moody uh, Bible Institute says, when God does something like that, that's the signature of God. He's, he's, he's showed up and he's provided and as I like to say, he showed up and showed off. Well, God provided the money, he provided the agency, then he provided Bob Lapine, who's the finest talent and best mind, I believe, in all of Christian radio. He came and we started Family Life today without having a program. Uh, he moved there and we were in a meeting, the phone rang, and it was Ed Adsinger of Salem Broadcasting. At that time, he owned 22 of the the top talk radio stations in the country. He called on the phone and said, I heard you guys were messing around with starting a radio show. Uh, I've just had a moral failure by a major uh, voice in Christian radio and so forth. And he said, you just need to know you could be, you could have a program on the air for a decade and not get these times. The last time I had a morning of, uh, availability in Los Angeles was seven years ago. Can you be ready to start in two weeks? We didn't even have a show. We'd not done a show. I think we had a demo, maybe. But uh, anyway, we prayed about it over the weekend, and on a Monday morning, we started, and we went to a, a little place apart uh, across the road from uh, an auto salvage. We called it Bethlehem, because from insignificant places come great things. And we rented a studio that had Pink Owens fiberglass on the walls and the ceilings with lattice from Home Depot 
keeping it in place, we rented that studio for half price, $25 an hour, including a technician, and did the first 10 shows and launched our, our, our radio show in November of 1992. Broadcast mushroomed from there. Uh, we now have a broadcast that's heard about 1,300 times uh, every day by about a million and a half people um, a week. Um, it's called Family Life Today. Uh, we have other broadcasts uh, that increase our listenership all the way to 9.2 million people who listen to real family life, uh, who want to know what uh, the author and architect of marriage has to say about how uh, a marriage can operate uh, here uh, between two fallen, broken people. It's been, it's been my privilege to be able to share Christ with a lot of people over the radio. And, uh, you know, the stories from all kinds of folks uh, whose lives have been touched from a little boy who started listening with his mother as she drove him to school in Washington, D.C. And 20 years later, he came up to me, now a seminary student, who told me that as a boy, he learned what a godly uh, man, what a godly husband, father should be from a broadcast that he started listening to as eight, nine, ten year old boy listening every day, just kind of picking things up, even though his mom probably thought he wasn't listening uh, at all. All the way to other listeners struggling with, with all kinds of sins, whether adultery, pornography, uh, all kinds of issues struggling with where people found hope, they didn't find condemnation, they found hope and, and found a way how they could turn uh, to Christ and allow Him to begin to make them into the person God created uh, him or her uh, to be. And then how they can enter into that most intimate of all relationships, marriage and family, which I think is what God had in mind when He made marriage and family in the first place. He wanted it to be a spiritual transmission center where the truth of this book and the truth about Him and the experience of Him can be passed on, not only to one generation, but multiple generations, uh, and to declare Him uh, to other generations as well.